Welcome to my February 19th creating photos and videos. As you can see, I'm doing what I say is it's not really my thing, recording this in our car. But I'm trying to maximize time and um, I just want to make sure I try to stay on schedule because I kind of screwed up again last week with not getting an episode out when I wanted to. And before I get to today's topic, let me just comment on the, something from the last two videos I've done where I reviewed two different smartphone holders for your car windshield and dash and the first one was one that had a, a bendable uh, arm and I was able to attach to my windshield and so I just tried that in a parking lot I didn't do it while I was driving obviously I just tried re recording with that but I noticed it was really bouncing a lot. So I stopped at a, stopped at a parking lot and switched to the Desert West holder. And it seems to be, I hope, not jumping so much. If it is, I apologize. This is not an optimum way to uh, record, I, I realize. I wanted to talk about a new camera I got. My frustration with my uh, Olympus EM5 Mark II and not being able to get really totally clean HDMI out when I used it with Cinemaker in a Ethernet network, a local network that I set up, that collided with my itchiness to have something new. And so I started searching and looking for alternatives and I, and I searched specifically for Panasonic cameras because Panasonic is, well, is known for good video compared to Olympus. They both do very good video. They both do good video, but Panasonic puts more into their cameras that support video than uh, Olympus has in the past anyway. And so I looked at some Panasonic. What I was looking for was number one, that it would shoot good quality video, that it would shoot good quality stills, and that it would uh, provide me with an HDMI out that was clean and, and just as a reminder clean HDMI out means that you don't have all the overlay information on the screen in your resulting video you see it it's what you see in the back of the camera when you're shooting video but you don't get that in your video when you you know when you actually look at the video and what I was getting with the EM5 Mark II was that overlay information that was one of the motivations for looking and as I looked around, I found uh, the, the Panasonic GX85 popping up a lot, it, it meeting my, my particular requirements. It is good video, it shoots 4K, which is something I haven't even experimented with yet, but it doesn't have, one downside video related is it does not have a mic input. But in the way that I plan to use it in, in this uh, connection or setup with two or three iOS devices as cameras and the GX85 as a, a fourth camera or a third camera, uh, I'll be getting the audio through a, a lav mic or my uh, Comica wireless mic from one of the iPhones. So that's not an issue for me, but it might be for you if you're looking for a camera. So originally the GX85, which is the GX80 in Europe and G7 Mark II in Japan. Crazy naming conventions. The GX85 retailed two and a half years ago when it came out for $799, $800 with the 12 to 32, the Panasonic 12 to 32 kit lens, a, little, a very small lens, but good lens. And I already have that lens because I got it with my um, GM5. So as I looked for used bodies for the GX85, I was finding prices, you know, in the 400 pluses up to $600. And I just happened to look at Adorama, and Adorama in New York had it for $319, so I bought it. And I was able to do this because I still had money left over from that uh, video editing gig that I did back uh, end of December and beginning of January. And so, 
I received it, and I've had it for several weeks, and I've been using it, and I, and I love it, really. It's, it's, it's nice, and the fact that I had the GM5, and that was the camera that I used exclusively in our most recent trip abroad, I've become familiar with the pan, fairly familiar with the Panasonic menus, so that's not an issue. And, and the button arrangement in the back. Of course, the button arrangement's always a little bit different, but what they do is similar from model to model. So getting used to the GX85 was not a big deal. And, th and this, I'm only talking about this as to why I got it, not to review this camera. There are plenty, trust me, there are plenty of reviews of the GX85 in the Micro Four Third Nerds, uh, I think I think her name is Emily, uh, does an, a good review. and So it satisfied my desire to get something new. I, I did test it with Cinemaker and it worked perfectly. You know, totally clean output. So that'll be great for adding to my setup when I want to have another camera and a camera that I can use uh, interchangeable lenses so I can you know, use like a 25 millimeter uh, 1.7 I think I have and it uh, will really let me you know, just blur the background in certain shots so that, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, I've had it for a couple weeks and I have been using it as I said and I, I like the quality of the images I'm getting. I will be using it with Cinemaker. I'm still working on cleaning up my basement as that is also something that kind of gets pushed aside. I am going to sign out and I thank you very much for checking in on this Creating Photos and Videos and I'll see you in the next one. Some more reviews coming up. Bye.